Well, welcome to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas. I'll be your host today, and we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people or projects, teams, or a company or business. We select themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Now, our webinar today is around an hour, and we'll be answering any questions that you've submitted online during the presentation portion of our webinar. Now, the focus of our webinar today is Connect to Build Influence, and I'm so excited to introduce our thought leader for today. Sales champion and leadership guru Michelle Beauchamp is on a mission to help business owners harness greatness and achieve the positive results they desire and deserve. She believes that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Connections are critical to building relationships. And once we begin to build relationships, we build influence. A certified trainer, coach, and speaker on the John Maxwell team, Michelle's style is one of engagement and high energy, resulting in practical application and fun. Most importantly, clients acknowledge quick implementation of mindset and behavior change. With more than 25 years of sales leadership, Beauchamp understands how to build collaborative teams and offers her integrated expertise and sound insights to business leaders who are determined to excel. So maybe it's time to stop being flustered and start helping your team flourish. Michelle, welcome to our show today. I'm so excited to hear what you have to share with us. Patty, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I really appreciate the invitation. We've been looking forward to this for a while and today it's here. So thank you so much for inviting me. I'm ready. Great, let's go, let's do it. There we go, okay. As you said, the topic is connect to build influence. I want to start with this question. What do two words mean? What does connect mean? And what does influence mean? Let me share with you some thoughts in terms of the definition. Connect means the ability to identify with and relate to others. So we are talking about connecting. That means that we are paying attention to identifying with what people say and connecting with what people say. So can you relate? So for example, when people say that they are interested in sports, like I'm interested in sports right now, uh, the women, we are in the season of the Women's World Cup, right? And we just finished the NBA fi uh, finals and we just finished the hockey finals. So when people are talking about connecting, they are talking about what they can identify with. Can we relate and can we identify? If we can, then all of a sudden we're connected. Another might, example might be uh, music. Maybe people talk about playing an instrument. And when they're talking about playing an instrument, then they might be able to relate. And so if they are, you know, oh, you play the saxophone? I play the saxophone. Or I was just at a concert last week and there was a great saxophonist. So those kind of things help us start to connect with people. Another example, I'm from Denver, Colorado, and a couple of weeks ago, I met someone who was on their way to Denver. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's my hometown. And suddenly we had a connection because we had a commonality and there are always vacations. So sometimes people are wondering, how can I start connecting with people? You can always talk about vacations. People love talking about their vacations. We just came back from Spain not too long ago. And, and I know that you just came back from, you were in Canada, I believe, right, Patty? Okay. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So we have a connection going on because we were able to talk about our vacation. So the first thing to think about is, if you are trying to connect with others, find topics that you can identify with and relate to. So that's connection. 
Now, in terms of influence, because when we connect, we want to build influence. Influence, by the definition from, from, from the dictionary, Webster says it's the capacity or power of a person to be a compelling force on actions, behaviors, and opinions. So the compelling force. Influencers are hot right now. I just saw something this morning about some influencer who's getting their, their engagement announcement paid for or something. So, <laughs> you know, we all want to be influencers, not so much in the way that we're trying to get a lot of likes though, or a lot of hits, but, you know, having people follow us. Um, and it could mean team members that we're working with at work that we want to help them decide to follow us, to implement an idea that we have. It could mean that we want for our spouse to, to do something. <laughs> we're trying to influence them. It could mean our children. So influence goes a lot of different directions. So connect and build influence. That's what we're talking about today. Super. Okay, and I'm flipping over to the next page right now and it doesn't seem to be working. There we go. Okay, so here's what we're going to be covering today. To connect, to build influence. We want to evaluate leadership levels. There are five that we will take a look at today. So recognizing the leadership level that we are and understanding how we progress to the ultimate leadership level. The next thing that we want to talk about is communication elements. Clearly, we have to have great communication. That is not a surprise to be able to influence others. And another topic that we're going to discuss is listening components. Listening sounds much simpler than it really is. And we're going to talk about some of those listening components. We're going to then move to factors that affect influence. We, you know, become aware of our leadership level and advance toward the top one. We recognize the communication elements and really mindful of showing our communication. And listening is such a big part of that. So then we're going to go to factors that affect influence. And then we're going to talk about how navigators win. When we are an ultimate influencer, others count on us to help them advance to the level they're trying to advance to, and then we win. We win, they win. Make sense? Great. Sounds awesome. Okay. So let me try and move my page. Okay, there we go. All right. So we are going to start by talking about leadership levels. This page is showing us the five that we're addressing today. There is the position. So you have the title. So there's the position of leadership. Then we have permission to lead others. We're going to address that. And then we start to advance toward the production level. Production, getting things done. We're then moving on toward really where influence comes, and that is people development. And then the ultimate that we're referencing today is called pinnacle. So our goal is to get to the pinnacle level. And so as you can see now, the first level is rights, the position. We have the rights. We have the rights because, well, we have the title. So when we have the title, it does mean that, you know what, we get to share with others what the expectations are. We do get a chance to tell people what to do <laughs> at the first level. We do get to tell them what to do. Um, you know, the thing to consider, though, is that it does not automatically mean influence. So we want to keep that in mind. It is the basic level. A key thing to remember is, you know, typically it is the first level. It's the lead position. It's the supervisor position, and the manager, the director, the VP. So when we have the title, then we do get the rights to tell people what to do. I'll tell you, there's some important things in this level. When you have the title, that means you do get a chance to approve vacations, for example. Um, you do have the rights to help determine whether or not and how that person gets a raise and how much are they going to get. So it's important to have the title. 
but we don't want to stay here. It's a good first step. And the reason we don't have to want to stay there is because it doesn't mean people have to follow us. And you know, influence is about having people want to follow us, but it is the first step. The next step is the permission level. That is about relationships. And you see what it says there. People follow because they want to. Mm -hmm. Starting the relationship building is critical. It's when we get people to work for us and they're not obligated to just because we have the title. This means in terms of relationships that we lead from the heart, not just from the head. We lead from the heart. The care, the showing that we care starts here. You've heard the statement. We've all heard this statement, I'm sure, multiple times. It goes like this. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People don't care how much you know. They don't. They don't want to hear all that. You know what they want? They want to know how much you care. And at this permission level, because it is the start of relationship building, then they know we care and they do decide that, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to follow this person. So this is where it all starts. Now, important to note, we said the position level is the good starting point and the permission level, it's great to advance here. But what happens sometimes is that if we stay too long at the permission level, then people can become restless and you know they can't really see where this relationship is really going so it's important then to be able to move to this next level the production level this means that we are getting stuff done you know there's another word for it but we'll call it you know gsd <laughs> and we'll say today it's about getting stuff getting stuff done results people follow you because what you have done for the organization. Some examples. You know, Patty, I've always been in sales. <laughs> so for me, it has to do with, you know, exceeding sales, right? Mm -hmm. Getting sales. And it could mean other things too, though. Maybe someone is given a task and they get it done and boom, it's done, it's done well. It's created some results and they're ready for the next one and, and they see the results. So at the production level, People want to see what you have done for the organization. It's amazing to see what happens here. The morale goes up. The profits go up. Excitement's in the, in the environment. And, and this makes me think um, of, of the environment that I, that I was in. I, I worked in, in the corporate world for a very long time, over 23 years in corporate, <laughs> always in telecommunication. And in 2017, it was a particularly exciting time for me because my office was the number one office. So it was super exciting. And, you know, to see what happened with the morale, to see what happened with the, with the profit, to see how the other people felt just being on the team, it made them more productive. And so this is beyond relationships. It's, it, you know, it's, it's even more than kumbaya, you know? People <laughs> feel good, but it's about results. People want to be on a team that is really exciting. People really want to be on that, on teams that deliver. So we want to remember that. And, you know, I mentioned that right now. We're, and you can tell I really like sports because I do talk about it. But this is the season for the Women's World Cup. And like I said, we did just finish. We got to see the St. Louis Blues win the hockey and hockey team. And you know, a few months ago, they would not have been chosen. So the players started recognizing what happens when everybody comes together and really delivered results because they got the trophy. And then, you know, the other one was the NBA, NBA championship. And Toronto were the big winners. And, and a few months ago, they would not have been predicted to, to win the NBA championship, but they got it done. So the you team- know, Michelle, you could have talked all day and never mentioned the NBA finals, but I'll forgive you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't recovered yet. 
You, oh, you haven't. You were a Warriors fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? It's all good because we all get involved and we have our teams. <laughs> so it's all good. I, I, I'm, I'm, you're going to be okay. You know, it, it was tough with the injuries. But talk about the production, you know, the yes. teams coming together and getting – and getting yeah. results. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's what we're talking about with this level. Now let's go to the next level. And this one is people development. People development is about reproduction. People follow because of what you have done for them. So, you know, on the production level, it was what we've done for the organization. On the reproduction, the people development it's what you've done for them. This is about empowerment. This is about multiplication. And you know what, at this level, this is where we get the loyalty. People mm. become loyal to the leader because of what we're doing for them. We're helping them grow. We're helping them get what they want. And when people get what they want, that means that we're really in tune with what's in it for them. We're recognizing it and we're providing the tools for them. That's what that means. It makes me think, it reminds me of the team that I led when, when I was at Spectrum. And you know, I, you know what, Patty, I love learning and I love growing. Clearly that's my mission is to help other people grow, but I can't help them grow if I'm not continuing to grow. Yeah. So I started a program at, at, at work that, you know what, we started a book club. And the book club that we started, it, we would read a book, and at some of our sales meetings, we would discuss the book and how it relates to us. And a really cool thing happened. It was definitely a transformation because I will share with you that they were not so excited about that at first. In fact, one of them told me, you know, I'm not really into reading business books. <laughs> and I said, I, I get it. I understand. And, and I'm okay with that. And if you understand that my mission is to help you grow, you know what? They really embraced it they started really sharing about how it affected them. And what was most exciting for me is that they then shared with me how they were sharing those books with their families and with their other family members, with their kids, and they really embraced it. What they got from that is it expanded their thinking. It gave them new ideas. And, and so some things that, I'm gonna give some questions to people who are listening or who will listen later, Patty, about things to evaluate for you because when you are developing others it's essential that we are developing ourselves so one question question number one is am i growing am i growing question number two is are people attracted to me because they see my growth mm -hmm. are people attracted to me because they see my growth question number three Am I successful in areas I want to develop others in? In other words, if I'm working to help people grow in these areas, how am I tracking? Am I growing and am I successful in these areas? And question number four, very, very important is this. Am I teachable? Hmm. Am I teachable? So, Four questions for us to ask ourselves as we are working to help others grow. We are focused on developing others and how are we doing at developing ourselves? And the ultimate level is the pinnacle level. Uh-oh, this didn't, that, oh, oh. okay. <laughs> there we go. The pinnacle level, this is about respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Aretha Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> this is about respect and reputation. This is where we all want to go. And I mean, there are people at this level that we can think of, and it's a really, there are really good examples of who we want to emulate. Nelson Mandela, for example, government. I mean, he is a person who was at the pinnacle level. Mother Teresa at the pinnacle level. Aristotle and philosophy, Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, these people are at the pinnacle level. And so not to have us get frustrated because it's like, oh my goodness, I, I don't think I'm at that level. I'm not at the legacy level yet. So here's what my recommendation is. Not to focus on the pinnacle level, focus on the first four. Focus on the position. How am I doing at the rights? Are people wanting to follow me? Permission, are we building relationships? 
Number three, production. What kind of results am I delivering and what am I doing for the organization? Number four, the reproduction, my, the loyalty. Am I getting loyalty? Um, and, and because of all these areas that I'm doing very well in, I know that as I continue to focus on these, then I will become a pinnacle leader. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about in terms of connecting to build influence is recognizing leadership level. To be an effective leader at any level, we know communication is a requirement, not just communication though. Mm -hmm. Effective communication is the key. So mm -hmm. what I want to us, to us to review now is the basic components of communication. Now, you can see the slide here, and so sometimes people are surprised to see when they take a look at the three components, which are tonality, words, and body language. So those are the three. Now, many times people are surprised to see that words are such a small percentage of the total. But let's discuss all these, starting with the one that's the biggest, which is body language. 55% body language, huge. Some ways to show disinterest, in other words, not being connected, are arms crossed. And the thing that I want us to pay attention to is not just taking a look at the body language of others when we're looking at them, but what body language are we showing when, we, when they are looking at us? Are our arms crossed? If they are, we might be showing that we're not interested or we're not buying into what they're saying. You know, if our arms are crossed, are we looking at the phone? Are we still looking at the computer? What are we doing to show our engagement? Ways to show that we are engaged are to lean in. I mean, you know, move, move toward them. Sit up in our chairs and, and lean in. Nod head. The nodding of the head is such a true indicator. And you know, I can't see people right now, but my hope is that your head's nodding as I'm talking about these topics. Eye contact is huge. When we are looking at someone in the eye, they know that we are connected. They know that we care. So the body language is so important, so valuable. Now, one thing that I do want to say, and I, when I'm training in different classes, if people's arms are crossed, the thing that I have become aware of it, it might not mean that they're not interested. It might be cold, many comments. <laughs> <laughs> so I make, it a, you know, I make a note to myself that, that if they're leaning in and their arms are crossed, then I, then I nod my head and say, okay, so we're connected. It's just that they're cold. <laughs> so huge. Now the next one, which shows the biggest, another big percentage is tonality. Tonality is huge. Tonality is huge. And, and, and you know, I know when I was growing up, um, my mom would say, Michelle, I know what you said. It's not what you said. It's how you said it. You're being sassy. <laughs> <laughs> and so tonality is really big. People get a lot just from the way we phrase things. I'm, I'm going to use this as an example. There are three words. Oh, that's good. Now, when we say, oh, that's good, then people know that, that whatever it is is really good and, and they connect with us on that. If we say, oh, that's good, then people say, that means, oh, I think there's a little sarcasm there. So we want to pay attention not to just what we say, you know, not just the words, but how we say it, the tonality really matters. And then we have the words. And I don't want to convey that words are not important. Words are 7%. And so words are important. It's just that the way we say it and the way we have our bodies situated is really communicating the whole, the whole message. Yeah. The, the words, remember when we were growing up, Patty, I don't know if you remember that, but... <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. <laughs> and so we said that to people when they were saying mean things, as young people do sometimes, and, and they were hurting our feelings, and we were helping them understand that we weren't going to let that hurt our feelings. Well, the truth is words matter. Yeah. It's just that we put so much emphasis a lot of times on what we're going to say, and what we want to start doing is 
also paying attention to what is our body language telling people and what's the tonality saying. So yeah. when we go back to how I define the word connect and the definition of that, it meant identifying with and relating to. So when we are mindful of our body language, then we want to show that we care by leaning in, nodding our head, giving eye contact. So those are the communication component, components. Another thing I want to focus on is the, the written form. We have sometimes way more written communication than we do verbal nowadays between all the emails and so many texts. So I wanted us to be aware of tonality in written form. And we see those exclamation marks there. Those exclamation marks, they tell us a lot. They say, pay attention to this. <laughs> if there's emphasis on this because of all the exclamation marks. But we want to be mindful. What are those exclamation marks saying to others? What's the tonality of those exclamation marks? And along with that are the A, B, C, D. Those are caps. So when we have capital, all caps, and when we have bold, what is that telling us? Pay attention. That's, and it might not be positive. You know, you might want somebody to really pay attention, but it might not be positive. So again, before we press the send button, we on the text and on the emails, we really want to notice how the other person, how the receiver is going to, what's, what's, their, what's their interpretation of what this message is. And of course now, you know, it seems like in the last couple of years, we've got all the different emojis. So we've got the anger, which is the first one there. And we don't want to get a message that shows that. I, I don't ever want to get a, a message with a, an emoji like that. And, you know, then there could be the confusion or the frustration or the silly or to keep this confidential. So the main reason I wanted to make sure to include this in communication components is because we have so many written forms of communication in addition to the verbal. So let's all pay attention to the email that we're sending and the text that we're sending. Is that helping us connect? So we're gonna now transition over to levels of listening. Now, we know that communication, you know, basic communication is the sender and the receiver, mm -hmm. right? We know that. Now, we also know that the sender means the person that's talking and the receiver means the person that's listening. Now, I will share with you that listening is such a big part of communication and it is so much easier said than done. So I have some information. I've been doing a lot of studying and a lot of training on listening lately. And there are, there are these different levels. There are five levels, and we call them the RRR. So the receptive listening, that means, this is where we want to be. Let's be clear. Let's let everybody be clear. I'm starting the description of these with where we want to be, and I'm ending it with where we don't want to be. So we really want to be on the receptive end of things. And the receptive listening equal being an empathetic listener. Now, we learned from Stephen Covey in the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People that people want almost more than anything else to be heard and understood. So they didn't want to just be heard. Yes, they want to be heard, but they want to be understood. And what I've, when I've been studying more lately on this is that there are a couple other categories. So there's heard and understood, and then there's accepted. People want to be accepted. And then because of that, they want to be felt. And the level of empathetic listening means we feel what's being said. This level means that we really are transforming communication to connection. It's when we're really mindful and demonstrating by nodding our heads like we talked about giving the eye contact that we discussed and, and leaning in. Receptive listening means empathetic listening. It means we feel you. People want that the most. I'm going to move over to responsive. It's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the map to leaning the journey to getting to receptive listening. There are two levels in responsive listening. One is selective, one is attentive. 
selective listening means the commonality. It's what we talked about. See, we had some more commonality, Patty. I talked about the NBA championship and you said, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'm still recovering from that. So the selective, the person who's selective listening, they're listening for things that they have commonality on. Remember, that was the step to influence, right? Connecting and influence. So selective listening means we're listening to a conversation and when someone talks about something we can really relate to, then, then we're really engaged. We become even more engaged. Attentive listening means people are listening, we're listening, and we're listening with the intent so that we can provide a response. We do want to show that we are engaged. We do want to show that we're listening. And the intent of listening is listening with the intent to respond. So I'm going to be a careful listener. And then I want to be able to prove that I am listening and I'm going to respond accordingly. So this is a good level. Responsive is good. Selective is good. Attentive is good. Okay. So where we don't want to be is removed listening. We don't <laughs> want to be at this level. And if we're being honest, we are at this level a lot. Ignoring. Ah, first of all, when we really have a goal to connect with people, we can't ignore them that there will be no connection. So we want to acknowledge what this is so that we can make sure that if we catch ourselves here, we don't stay here, right? We immediately move away from that. This means that maybe someone came to your office or your cube or your desk and you were engaged in some th article or something and you didn't look up at them. You just kept reading your article or you're looking at your emails on your computer. You just ignore them. If we pay attention to it, we do that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And then there's a the pretend listening. The pretend listening means, you know, it's like we're looking at an email, we're looking at the phone and we're pretending to listen, but we're not really engaged. And, you know, and, I, and I, I share this example. My husband, Clark, we've been married almost 37 years. So, so clearly <laughs> we've got a great marriage. And I tease him about doing a lot of pretend listening with me. <laughs> he, I'll talk to him and he'll be looking at his phone. And finally I'm saying, okay, so, you know, should I come back later? And then he puts his phone down. And, but I will tell you, I, I, he's gotten a lot better because I've, <laughs> I've called him out on it. Now, you know, he has a lot of great qualities. It's just that he does do pretend listening sometimes. I must say, though, not as much as he was a few months ago. So it's, it's getting better. But it's where, you know, he's looking at his phone. He, he's looking at the news and whatever things on the phone. And, and he's not really dialed into where I'm at, uh, where, what I'm talking about. So these levels of listening, we really want to be mindful. So to re, to, to just to reiterate, we don't want to be in the remove listening. We want to move away from that. We want to catch ourselves and then get away from that so that we can move toward responsive listening. We want to be able to selectively listening and reply and reply back when things are, we, we have commonalities and attentive so that we can give the right response. And our ultimate state is the receptive listening so that we can transform the communication and really show that not only do we hear, not only do we understand, and not only do we accept, but we feel. Right. That's where we want to be. And there are some realities to listening. I mean, it is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. And so I want to go over some of these requirements. There are some requirements for, by the sender and the receiver. And I like this picture here because these two young men, they're engaged. They are giving each other eye contact. Their body language demonstrates that they're, they are connecting. So I want us first, as we understand how to get to the ultimate level, the receptive listening level where we show empathy. One is to recognize that we have presence, that presence, it, it takes presence. We have energy. Listening requires energy. We must be present. That means that when we're present, we're not pretending, we're not ignoring, we're with them as indicated with this picture. The next one then is caring. And I wanna share three questions people ask when they're deciding whether or not we are going to influence them, whether or not they are going to follow us. The first thing people are asking is, does this person care for me? Does this person like me? 
And that is, a, you know, it's about likability, right? So people are asking that. Does that, does this person even like me? That's a matter of compassion. They're, they're thinking about that when they're deciding to follow you. And you know what? You are thinking about that as you are deciding who you want to follow as well. The second question that they're asking, can this person help me? You know, when we took a look at the levels of leadership and we started talking about the production and the reproduction, that person has to decide, can this person help me? I'm trying to advance the next level. Is this person the right person to help me get where I'm trying to get to? So this is a matter of competence. And then the third question that people are asking when they are deciding if they want to follow you, and that is, can I trust that person? Mm. This is a matter of character. That's big. Right? Mm -hmm. Can I trust them? So we want to really be mindful that people have all these questions going on in their mind as they're thinking about whether or not they want to, they want to follow you. And then last and not least is the same message. It's so easy to get the messages disconnected and that, you know, sometimes I'll say, so you're on page three and I'm on page 10 or vice versa. You're on page 10 and I'm on page three. We don't want that. We want to both be on the same page as we are moving toward influence and listening to connect there. These are the requirements. And this page here, Listen to Connect, talks about values of listening. Now, this picture here, she looks so pleasant. She's showing the heart sign. And, <laughs> and this makes me think of something that I learned, Patty, many years ago. I, I was a sales director with Mary Kay. And one thing that I learned from her was this. We all are wearing an invisible sign around our neck saying, make me feel important. Make me feel important. When we help people feel important, that's where building relationships begins. Increasing knowledge and generating ideas are other values. And these two go together. And I like this picture too, because these people are working on projects together. They are collaborating. They're not working in their little silos and they don't have their doors shut. They're working on a project and they're getting stuff done. It looks to me like they're at least on the production level, most likely on the reproduction level, when we take a look at the leadership levels. So we talked about the requirements and we recognize the values. Now, there are some barriers to listening. I mean, look at this picture. They are not having a good dialogue. They look pretty frustrated. The body language is clear. They are, they are not connecting, are they? No. So, no. <laughs> they are not connecting. And so we want to be mindful of these things because sometimes we're tired. And if we know that we're tired, we need to be willing to say that to the person because it's not the right time. We make assumptions. You know, sometimes people come to us and we think, you know what? You just talked to me about this this morning. Now, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so we have to make sure that we're not making assumptions. Something could have changed from this morning that they need to speak with us about. And, you know, we're not in the mood. I mean, maybe we just had a difficult conversation with someone else and we are not in the mood. So that is a barrier to listening. And we'd be doing the other person a favor by letting them know, not a good time. Mm -hmm. Sometime we have the need for control. Sometime it's very difficult for people to listen because they want to be the person talking and in control. So we have to be mindful of the benefits, the values that we talked about before. And you know, people tell me this is difficult for them sometimes. It's tough to focus because we want to interrupt. We think we already, know, we, we interact with them a lot. We think we know what they're going to say, or, or we know the answer and we want to hurry up and tell them. And that is, that's a barrier. If we know that people want to feel important, like we said on the previous page, then we can't interrupt. And that is a barrier. So we're going to talk about some recommendations to listening. Now, this picture here, they are having good dialogue. They look happy. They're smiling. Their body language is good. So they're all looking at each other. So we need, we talked about the importance of eye contact. 
Focus on understanding, and I want to touch on this just really quickly. Focus on understanding. This means comprehending, so we need to understand it. Responding and retaining. How many times are we guilty of hearing someone, but then forgetting? So when we are testing ourselves and evaluating how well we are doing on listening, on connecting, we need to be able to recognize how well we are comprehending, responding, and retaining. And then I have practice active listening. And here's what I mean by this. Active listening, a little tool when I'm teaching in person, I have people practice active listening. It means paraphrasing. In other words, if someone says, well, let's just say this. Um, Patty, you said, you know what? I'm still recovering from the Warriors not winning the NBA championship. A way to make sure I heard you correctly would be, sounds like you are a Warriors fan. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like. So, so two ways to reiterate sounds like. And the other one is, if I hear you correctly, if I understand you correctly, you feel this way. What happens when we practice active listening? Remember earlier I said we want to be on the same page and have the same message? When we practice active listening, it validates that we are on the same page. So we want to practice that. And I found that when I practice it, two things, ha one of two thing ha th things happen. The person might say, no, that's not what I said. And guess what? It might be what they said, but it might not be what they meant. Or I might not have understood it and said it correctly. So it helps us understand and, and be on the same page. The other thing that could happen is they could say, that's exactly right. That's exactly what I meant. So we know we're connected. Active listening really makes a difference. The next one is focus on understanding. So we talked about that, and I just want to go over this again. There are some ways for us to focus on understanding. Listen with your eyes, and your hearing will be improved. Isn't that a great statement? <laughs> That's great. Listen with your eyes and your hearing will be improved. Listen with empathy and acceptance. Listen for the areas where they are afraid. This is huge. Listen with empathy and acceptance, acceptance and listen for areas where they are afraid and hurt. Oh my goodness. This means receptive listening. We will not pick this up if we are in anything other than receptive listening. Afraid and hurt. So people want to be heard and understood, accepted and felt. We need to be able to feel their pain. Listen as you would like to be listened to. Got it? Listen as you would like to be listened to. And what is that? The golden rule. Remember the golden rule? Mm -hmm. Treat others as though you want to be treated. Listen as you would like to be listened to. And there's more on this. Listen with the head-heart connection. Head-heart connection. Not just the head, but the heart. Mm -hmm. Listen with the intent of understanding. We talked about that. Listen for the message and the message behind the message. This is critical. This could be a class on its own. People might be saying something, and we need to really be dialed into what are they really feeling, and that's the bottom one there. Listen for both content and feelings. Okay. So now that we've talked about the values of listening, I want to move toward becoming a person of influence and leadership equal influence. And you mentioned that, Patty, when you introduced me. And, and I'm on the John Maxwell team. And John Maxwell says, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And so first, I want to show, I want people to focus on these four categories here that we have. One is parent to child, child to parent. Children influence parents a lot. And parents influence children a lot. So it works both ways. We want to understand that. Next one is peer-to-peer. -peer. You influence your peers and they influence you. Manager to employee. How true is that? Mm -hmm. We influence our managers and they influence us. It's not a one-way thing. When we're talking influence, it's two ways. And then the last one, sales professionals and customers influence each other. So I really like to talk about this little graph here first because we want to understand leadership is influence nothing more nothing less and it happens both ways 
So leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. It starts with understanding that connecting is all about others. Now, there are five factors that affect influence and leadership. The first one is vision. And I'm going to share really quickly, I'm going to combine all these with an experience that I had that was a really fun experience for me. A few years ago, I did the Avon 39 mile walk for breast cancer. And now I do the Susan Comey 60 miles. So I stepped it up literally. But when I was doing the Avon 39 mile walk, I was a team cap, a leader for Oprah Magazine. That was a very cool experience. I had 20 people on my team both years, so that was really cool. That was a lot to lead, I tell you. There was a lot of learning for me and a lot of activity. But I had a vision, and the vision was that we raised a lot of money. I told my team members, I really want to raise, I, there, were four, there were four cities where there was a team O oh, captain. And I told my team, my vision is that we're the biggest, and we were. We had 20 people, and we raised $50,000. So that was huge. So that was my vision. But I wanted to be pragmatic about it. And, you know, my goal was to help them understand the process. So when we are leading people, we have to be very practical and we have to break the goals in the chunks. So my recommendation was do not break, think you're going to break out and walk 26 miles in one day and then the next 13 miles the next day without practicing and training. And so you have to practice. First, you walk three miles, then you walk six, then you can walk 10, et cetera, et cetera. First, you start off by sending a fundraising letter, then you send another one. You don't just raise your money all at once. So practical experience. An example of consensus, consensus building. We will not have influence if we tell people what to do. Remember that picture where they were collaborating and generating ideas and building knowledge? Yeah. When we were deciding how to train together, we had to take a look at each other's schedules. We had to take a look at geography, where people lived, how we, where, where was a good um, medium place for us to train together. So we had, to, we had to be able to do that. Consensus building. Then there was charisma. And people say, well, how do you get charisma anyway? Are you just born with it? And, and what I've learned about it is when you have charisma, it's because you show you care. Remember those questions that I had before? about people deciding if they want to follow us when we listen to people and we show that we care, then that's when we are displaying charisma. When people displayed and, and discussed some of their fears with me, oh, I don't like to raise money. Oh, I can't train like that. Then I really showed that I cared and I listened and that helped me build charisma with them. And the last one is trustworthiness. I mean, I had done it. So I had done it three years before. So they knew that I had experience. I could give them information about the kind of shoes to wear, the how to train, the food to eat, et cetera, et cetera. So when we are influencing people, we want to make sure we share that we have the vision and we share it. We give them practical ideas. We get their input. We help them understand we care about them and we show them that we can help. So leadership is getting results through others. That's great. This is a great graphic, Michelle. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> good. Thank you. Now, leaders influence others. That's when they start navigating for others. Remember the chart on leadership, the levels, the reproduction. When we're reproducing others, they are counting on us to navigate for them. Good navigators, they get to know others. And look at these, these pictures on here. These are emotions, right? We need to understand the emotions that people have. We need to understand what makes them cry. What makes them, what are their emotions? And we need to not, you know, poo-poo those. We need to acknowledge those. What are they passionate about? The more we understand what people are passionate about, the more we can connect with them. Remember the whole identify and relate? What makes them sing? And, and I love this because when people sing, that means they are really happy. It's the happy feeling that people have. What makes them sing? What do they dream about? What is making people, what are they dreaming about? What do they see themselves doing and, you know, by the end of this year and by next year? And what, what are they dreaming, dreaming about personally, professionally, really being connected? This level 
is all about connecting. And what is their why? Mm -hmm. You know, people are doing something for a reason. They're typically not just doing it for the heck of it. We really need to understand their why. And Simon Sinek has a great um, video on YouTube about really connecting with the why of people. So good navigators get to know others. When we understand these emotions, we are connected. We are at the influence level. And we are navigating for others. A leader is one who sees more than others see, who sees further than others see, and who sees before others see. So when we are thinking about leaders who we followed and we think, you know what? They did have a vision that I liked. And you know what? They saw more. And, and a good leader, too, who's navigating, they see more in us than what they see. They see further for us than what we see. And they see before others see. So to wrap up, what we have talked about in connecting to build influence, we've talked about leadership levels. We addressed, you know, getting beyond the position, moving on to permission, moving over there toward production and reproduction and the ultimate pinnacle level, which when we focus on the first four, then our likelihood to get to the fifth one is bound to happen. When we are consistent at working on all four of those, of those levels. So we talked about the leadership levels. We address communication elements, the significance of words for sure, and the impact that body language and tonality have on communication and we also talked about the value of recognizing the written communication and the messages that the tonality that we send and the messages that we send when we're doing that listening components we know we don't want to be in that fourth and that third level we know we don't want to be pretending and ignoring we know that we're working we're working on the uh, um listening to them and selectively listening to know the commonalities. And we know that we're being attentive because we do want people to know that we're listening. And we know now that we really want to be at the ultimate level, which is receptive, where we are transforming from communication to connecting. And in terms of becoming a person of influence, recognizing those five factors, the vision, the char charisma, getting their input, and navigating for others, helping others win. That's it. When other people see that we want to help them win, that's when we know we're reproducing and on our way to the top level. And you know, I'm gonna open it up for questions and then I do have a special um, offer that I wanna talk about. But in closing, Patty, I have a couple of quotes here. I, I like to end in quotes usually or, or statements and I have a couple that I thought were relevant. The first one's by Sheryl Sandberg and it says this, more than anything else, you're going to need the ability to communicate authentically, to speak so that you inspire the people around you, and to listen so that you can continue to learn each and every day on the job. And then someone who I love and got a chance to meet and introduce, it was a highlight in my life. And that is Maya Angelou. Oh. And it's quite simple what she said. She said this, be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. And with that, I want to thank you. And I um, really, really, really hope that this information has provided some nuggets that people can take with them and implement right away. For me, I always want people to be able to, you know, as soon as this afternoon, be able to implement some of the principles that we've talked about. I do have an upcoming sales boot camp that I'm excited about, and it's targeted for people who are not sales professionals. So it means people who have the the, the responsibility to bring in business and you know what have not really been trained in it my mission as i said is to help people learn and grow and and get even more success and so i've got a boot camp coming up 
And that one's going to start July the 26th. And then in the end of August, I'm starting an, a mastermind group. I lead mastermind groups, and I'm going to start a new one. Um, and it's going to be virtual. One's going to be on leadership, and um, the other one's going to be on put your dreams to the test. And I'm going to start one, then the other. So there's going to be two that I'm going to start, and kind of depending on what people seem, what, what resonates most with people, I'd like for them to learn more about that. I do one-to-one -one coaching where I get to really listen and mentor for me coaching is also mentoring listening uh, advising helping get people get people different results than what they've gotten and i do that in one to one coaching slash mentoring and you know i also have disc ass assessments that are available so i love to offer those to people it really helps people learn two things one is about themselves and then in addition others being able to then have better relationships and become more self aware and yes, I love to come and work with companies and provide group training for them. So those are some offerings that I've got. I do have my website and it's listed here. And for people who are on the call until July 19, I'm going to offer $50 savings on any of those programs that, that, that you, you find that, that is appealing to you. So I'd love to be able to talk with you more about it. My phone number's on there, 949. 713-3622 and my website beasalechamp.net beasalechamp.net to learn more <laughs> and i do have some toolkit articles on there for free as well i like okay. that great that is so great this was just really really a fabulous um fabulous webinar michelle i really enjoyed all of the communication and listening and and so forth there is one question a lot of the questions that came in you've already addressed through the presentation but i really loved this one it was how do i stop talking so much and listen more so do you have any quick tips on that <laughs> that's a webinar all in itself right you know what it could be right but i love the question too and you know, I would say to really dial into those levels of listening. When we are mindful about listening and we understand how much it helps people connect and how important it makes people feel, then we stop talking so much and start listening. And we and there is uh, I, there could be a webinar on how to how to ask questions. There definitely could be a webinar, but. You know what? It's that whole charisma thing that I talked about. When we don't talk so much and we instead listen to others, then they feel very valuable. Yeah. And then we recognize just by the way they're interacting with us that we've helped them feel important. Remember that people wear an invisible sign saying make them feel important. And you know what makes people feel good is listening to them. That's what makes people feel good. So I think recognizing that helps. Yeah. Great, great answer, great answer. <laughs> well, um, I would just really like to thank you again, Michelle, for being our leader today and for bringing such great, um, great information and, and usable immediately. I, I like what you said about you hope people took away things that they can put into practice right away. That's mm -hmm. always the goal of our webinars. So mm -hmm. we are very selective in who we allow to bring on and, and present information. So this was, this was just fabulous. I had a great awesome. time and I'm sure that anyone who listens to this uh, either live or um, in the recording afterwards is going to get so much out of it. And I just want to thank you again for being our thought leader today and to all of our attendees today who were online and as I said anyone who listens to this in the playback thank you for joining us and we will be back in two weeks with our next women lead webinar series on how you can achieve lead learn and succeed as a female leader in business thank you so awesome. much for joining us today and we look forward to our next next great session thanks again michelle appreciate it so much patty thank you very much too thank you so much i appreciate that too i appreciate you thank all you. right take care okay